Hi, Paul here from Easy Composites. In our last tutorial, I covered a cost-effective method of making a one-off or prototype motorsport wing. And, as promised, in this video, we're going to be testing it to destruction. Now, if you've not already seen that previous video, it might well be worth going and checking that out first, as seeing how this is constructed is going to make it more interesting to play along and make your own predictions as to how this is going to fail. Now, watching failures is not only entertaining, but it can also be very useful. Firstly, it's going to tell us whether this wing is able to withstand the amount of downforce that it can generate. And also, as engineers, it's always useful to watch failures, as it will help to develop our natural instinct and understanding for how this material performs, which, in turn, will help us to make better initial design decisions. So, let's get straight into it. So this is the test rig that I've devised. Fundamentally, it is a very simple thing. We just have a steel frame with two steel uprights that we can mount into the end plates of the wing. And then between those two, we can put our bladder, which we can then inflate to apply pressure or force onto the wing itself. Then we have a dial indicator here, which will tell us the amount of deflection that the wing's undergoing in the initial stages of the test. And we have a digital pressure gauge, which is going to tell us exactly the pressure that we have inside the bladder, and therefore the amount of force that we're applying. For the bladder, we're going to be using some tubular bagging film. This is the exact same stuff that we use in vacuum bagging all of the time. We just need to seal up the ends and attach a valve. I'm sizing the bag to be longer than the test area. Any excess will be folded over. By oversizing the bag this way, I will be taking away some of the strain on the sealed ends. The ends of the bag can be quickly sealed using a heat sealer. These tools are readily available as they are commonly used in packaging. If you do use this film in your vacuum bagging projects, it's worth considering this method of sealing them instead of using sealant tape. The pressure connection can then be positioned and pierced through the bag before sealing the other end. The fitting that I'm using for the pressure connection is a Schrader valve for a tubeless bicycle rim with the valve core removed. This will seal to the bag when tightened down into the countersunk hole. Then a hose can be attached. The wing element can then be bolted into position. Due to the stiffness of the test rig, I'm using rubber washers in the mounts to allow for a degree of movement as the wing flexes. The digital pressure gauge is installed in line and then connected to a pressure source. To measure how much the wing deflects, I'll use a dial indicator. A destructive test like this could be unpredictable, so I'll just use a basic instrument on a magnetic base. So we're now all set up and ready to go putting load onto this wing. Now to inflate the bladder, you're much better off doing this hydraulically rather than using compressed air. The reason for that is water is virtually uncompressible. And so when the wing does get to that point of failure, there's going to be much less stored energy in that media. And when it does fail, it's likely to do so in a much more controlled way. Now to charge this hydraulically is very simple. The easiest way to do it would be to use a hydraulic test pump like this, commonly used for testing heating and plumbing systems. Now you would just fill this reservoir with water, connect this into the bladder and pump it and gradually you'll increase the pressure. But to give this the best possible chance of making for an interesting failure, we are opting to do this with air. It's not what I'd recommend, and of course I'll be doing it from behind a screen at a safe distance, but it is much more likely to give us a slightly more dramatic failure. So let's get some air in here and see what happens. The first test is to measure the deflection at the point of its maximum producible downforce, which for this wing is just under 100 kilograms. With a wing area of 3,000 square centimetres, we can calculate that this is achieved with a pressure in the bladder of 0.031 kilograms of force per square centimetre. At this load, you can see we've deflected just 6 millimetres. The dial indicator can then be removed, and we could go on to find its final point of failure, so we can determine what factor of safety we have. From this point on, I'm definitely staying behind my safety screen. I'm sure that many of the scientific minds watching this will be able to immediately identify some of the compromises of this test method. Namely, we're only applying force to one side of the specimen. Also, in using a bladder, we will have some reduction in contact area and pressure caused by tension in the film. But even factoring for these compromises, I feel that this method is still providing data that is useful for the application. OK, we're now simulating more than 600 kilograms of force, and it looks like something's about to go. Ah, 
As you can see, we have managed to achieve a failure. We've pulled the insert clean out of the end of the wing. Now, I will point out at this stage, the amount of load that we're applying to this is vastly beyond the amount of load that the wing is designed to generate. So I certainly wouldn't expect to see a failure like this out on the racetrack, and this general design and construction would be perfectly suitable. Now, if we take a look at the slow motion, you might be able to work out what's gone on here. Because of the very stiff test rig that we've got, as the wing has deflected, we've actually put a very strong pulling force onto those inserts and that has just pulled them clean out of the end. Now in terms of damage, we haven't really sustained that much. We've got some delamination on the trailing edge, but this would be relatively easy to fix. It could be bonded back together and the wing could be put back into service. But we're not done with testing this wing yet. I think it would be really interesting to see just how much load the main element can take. In order to do that, I'm going to need to fabricate up some saddles that are going to support the load during the test. The saddles have been designed so that they have an even contact area, and that is further softened using some neoprene foam. For this final test, these saddles should really allow us to find what the main element itself can take. Right at the start here, we're soon past the 100 kilograms of downforce, which is the maximum the wing is ever likely to generate. You can see the wing is starting to deflect quite considerably. Having a wing deflect this far in normal use would obviously be a problem, but establishing what margin we do have to full failure on this element will help us to understand just how over-engineered it is and therefore what weight we might be able to take out of it. We're approaching 800 kilograms of downforce, which is past the point where the end plates ripped out in the previous test. How much more can this take? Over 1,200 kilos. That's pretty impressive for an element that was made using such a simple process. Not quite as dramatic as I'd hoped, but at least I don't need to replace any of the ceiling tiles. Looking at how this has failed, firstly, the failure is almost exactly in the center of the wing. That is what we would expect, as that's where most of the stress will be concentrated. The side that's failed first is the side that's under compression, and we've got a full fracture running all the way through this face, which has also propagated round partly onto the side that was under tension. On the trailing edge, we do have some delamination here. That's caused by this being stressed and getting some interlaminar shear. So we could certainly consider that this has catastrophically failed, but let's not forget the huge amount of force that was being applied of over 1,200 kilos before it finally did. So what can we take away from this testing? Well, certainly we've proven that this wing would perform perfectly well out on the racetrack and wouldn't run any risk of structural failure. At the maximum downforce that it's designed to generate of 100 kilos, this wing was only deflecting 6 millimetres and ultimately could go on to take nearly eight times that amount of force. Whilst the build method used to produce this wing was specifically designed to be as simple as possible, having a huge safety margin like this does indicate that this wing is stronger than it needs to be and so could be optimised to prioritise stiffness over strength. So we can maintain the same level of stiffness while reducing the overall amount of material used in the wing and therefore reducing its weight. If this is something you're interested in, we do touch on ways that you might optimize the design in the main build video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, drop them in below. And if you've not already done so, go and check out the main build video for this wing or have a look over our channel where we've got lots more videos on composite engineering. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next one.